Okay, so now I'm going to move on to the security parts of Beyond the Linux from Scratch. Now, I'm not going to install everything here, but I'm just going to install some key parts, um, which are probably verging on necessary more than nice to have, um, such as Linux PAM, which will entail a rebuild of Shadow, which we built in Linux from Scratch and things like MakeCA, which provides the certificates which WGET needs and anything else on the system that needs certificates to authenticate um, various things. <clears throat> um, so as well as those, there'll all be some other, also to be some other packages in this section to be pulled in, such as P11 Kit, um, maybe one or two others as well. Uh, sudo. I'll be installing because that's extremely useful to have. Um, and most of these will have a dependency on Linux PAM, so this this Linux PAM could be one of the first packages we install. Um, let's get up my spreadsheet again. Right. So I'll start with make CA because that's fa fairly critical in that it's a it's um, something that's required every time we download something. We have to override the no check certificate, which is a potential security hazard. So let's start with that one. So you can see straight away it's already got some dependencies that we'll need to resolve, and these themselves may have dependencies as well. Um, and if you've never done BLFS before, um, because it's not a strict recipe as such, like Linux from scratches from beginning to end, you'll find that you've got resolved dependencies yourself. And how you track those dependencies is up to you, but I tend to use the tabs on the browser to manage that. It kind of works. Um, it's the most effective way I've found so far. I've tried spreadsheets in the past. I've tried making handwritten notes. And the problem with those two methods is that it's quite easy to forget to write down or add something to the spreadsheet. The spreadsheet is quite good in that you can create a hierarchy of dependencies to a certain extent. Um, so you go list down the um, packages you're installing and then across you can put the dependencies, but it kind of breaks down a little bit when those dependencies are shared by other packages. You know, how do you resolve that dependency? Do you put it in twice in the spreadsheet or make a note or something? So it kind of works, but not that wonderfully well, um, which is why I tend to use a combination of the browser to get up the work that I need to do and also um, just by examining what files have downloaded again that's not foolproof because I might have downloaded a file and realized there's another dependency gone off to do that and just because of the fact that the um, a file is there a package has been downloaded doesn't mean to say that it's been installed so the the ultimate way for checking is at the end of each of the in, uh, pages for the instructions for building a package there's usually some information some information about what gets installed um, so if it's a library, you can look for that in lib, or if it's a binary, you can look that in, you know, look for it in bin or use a bin, s bin, wherever uh, might be appropriate. Um, so let's start with this. I've just noticed I've got GPM still from previous session. So okay, so this is a timer. I can't use sudo. I was just going to use sudo then, but I can't. So let me remove that. Uh, let's turn this dimming off. Appearance. Active, that's it there. Okay, so I'll remove that directory. Type 
and root password. That should have gone now. Yeah, and like I said before, keep your LFS boot scripts because it's it's not something we build, it's just there, it's static, but it's handy to have that available run, have to extract it all the time. It, it doesn't need to be um, removed every time. Uh, well, it looks like I downloaded that outside the system, so I'm just going to change the ownership of that one to root. Just for consistency, why didn't that work? Okay, because I'm not the root user, so again, I'm going to have to become root to do this. Okay, so you can see why sudo would be uh, quite useful to have at this point. But as I say, I think MakeCA is probably a little bit more important at the moment because it will resolve the issue of having to add on the no check certificates every time. Um, yeah, this is HTTPS again, so I'm going to have to put in no check certificate. Okay, I've got to be root of nice, so let's become root. Let's try that again. So I'm going to extract it, change into it. Uh, and OK, I'm getting a bit ahead of myself here because there's some requirements. It says we need P11Kit for runtime built after libtazen required in the following instructions to generate certificate stores from trust anchors and each time makes the A's run and optional runtime NSS. Well, I always install NSS. It's probably a, quite a good thing to have around. Um, so both of these are runtime. This, so make CA could, in theory, be run now. It just wouldn't work. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get these packages up to install. Um, it looks like Libtazen should be next. So let's see what other requirements NSS has got. That's got NSPR and it recommends P11 kits. Although P11 kits only run time, we need to install that for NSPR, uh, sorry, for NSS. So let's get NSPR up, SQLite, and I'm going to move P11 kit next to SQLite because that's a requirement for that. Um, So look at NSPR. Right, what I'm going to do is install NSPR straight away because let's get rid of make CA. We don't need it yet. Um, it's got no dependencies, so it's a quick one just to get out of the way, keep the number of tabs down. So let's do wget. Got to keep remembering to actually paste these folders. Uh, not the folder, sorry, these uh, links. So let's extract NSPR. And install NSPR by running these commands in. Um, as I said previously, it's worth checking the explanation, see if there's anything extra you either want to add or remove. Um, otherwise, it just explains what the commands are as it does here. So with Mozilla, add support for the Mozilla libraries. So that's a good idea. And pthreads forces use of the system pthread li library. So that sounds like quite a good idea as well. So yes, we can copy and paste all this in one go. If you want to learn a bit more about what's going on, you might want to just do one command at a time to get a grip of what's happening. Okay, so that was built okay. 
Um, I'm not sure what the problems were I was having with the network. It might be something to do with this machine I'm using to do the recording. I have made some changes recently to networking, so it could have been that. It, I thought it was the internet, but it looked like it was a problem with the local configuration, so hopefully we won't see that today. The pauses, I don't seem to have seen any pauses so far, so hopefully... There won't be any more problems. So there's no tests for that. So we'll just run make install. Scroll all the way down. As I say for Linux with Scratch as well, scroll all the way down to the bottom of the page if you're going to step on to the next page, which is less likely in BLFS. But just scroll down anyway, just to check there's no configuration or more information about the installation that could easily be missed if you just did make install and then think that's it. So that's NSPR. Let's add that to the spreadsheet. And save that. Shut that tab down. So SQLite's got libedit. That looks like that's outside of the BLFS because it's in, it's in bold and it's slightly different color blue. It's a bit of a lighter blue. So I won't be adding that, but unzip's a useful thing to have anyway. Um, it says it's only required to unzip the documentation anyway, but you know, even if you weren't installed in the documentation, unzip is probably useful. And there are a few other packages that you'll need it for to actually extract the package. So let's just tidy NSPR up. And there's some notes here about locale related issues so that might be worth paying attention to um, if, in case that's important so we've got two files to download here the package itself and a patch there's some more information there about it Um, I've not, oh, right, okay, I didn't do this, no check certificate again. I don't think I'm aware that by default, certainly for the locale that I'm using, UK locale, that there's been, ever been any problems, certainly as far as building Beyond Linux from scratch is concerned, um, whether there would be any problems with um, proper, like, day-to-day -day use of Beyond Linux from scratch, um, I, I'm not in a position to say about that. But obviously, if you do have issues, that might be something you want to look at. So let's extract, unzip. Okay, what's it called? Unzip 60. So it's a bit of an unusual naming in that the version number straight after the name of the package. So first of all, we'll do the patch. Then we compile the package. Test suite does not work for target generic, so we'll just go straight for an install. And that's unzip completed. So add that to the list. And tidy up. And we can now move on to SQLite. So although um, SQLite is quite a small package, for its size it takes a little bit longer than you'd expect if you just went by the size of the package. So it, I think there's only like a few C files it compiles, but they must be quite big because it seems to pause while it's compiling, but it is actually doing something. It's a little bit misleading, this package. So let's start by extracting it. Uh, 
Um, so it says... It doesn't actually mention it, but it, it's not, again, an un, a usual naming convention for the file. It's called SQLite Autoconf. It's not SQLite dash and a version number. Change into it. Run, as you can see, unzip, which we just built to extract documentation to the build directory. And now let's have a look at the command explanations. There's no additional explanations here apart from what the reason reasons are for the ones that are shown in the book. So we'll just copy the configure and I'll time this just to see how long it takes to build it. Okay, so 30 seconds, that's probably fairly accurate in terms of the um, SBU rating. So there's no test suite, so just to make it stall and install the documentation if you decided to download it and install it. So that's SQLite, nice and simple. And it's probably worth installing this anyway. Um, even if it was optional because it's used by a few other packages I believe. So how are we doing? We need P1 Monkit next. And that's got a few dependencies on its own. Libtasm is a recommendation. Let's have a look at that one. So GTK docs, not something I'm going to be installing. I think there's more to do with API documentation. Valgrind is for, Valgrind rather, is for extended testing and debugging um, so I won't be installing that either so let's tidy this up and fetch libtazen uh, let's get it from the FTP being there's an FTP link there make it a little bit easier for us and I'll just check the MD5 sum on that And that matches, so that's fine. So as you see, a lot of these dependencies are tiny little programs that don't take too long to download and install, but there's going to be lots like that, hundreds, I would have thought, um, which can get a bit tedious. Um, if I do go quiet when I'm building these little ones, that's probably why, because there's no point in keep saying that I'm extracting and compiling and so on. So let's configure and build and then run some tests. Right, that's all passed, that's good. Let's install and it says if it did not pass the enable GTK doc, which it didn't because we haven't got GTK doc installed, you can install the API documentation. Well, I'm not going to be doing any, any programming. Uh, it's unlikely to be useful, so I'm not going to install that at all. So let's just tidy up and put that one into the spreadsheet. And shut that down. So P11 kit. Now, GTK doc. Yeah, I'm not installing that. Libx SLT. I have a feeling this gets us into another um, realm of dependencies. So I'm going to sort of be a little bit slow here while I'm thinking about what, what needs to be done. Um, 
And yes, I think this is the reason why this is here. Although it's not direct dependency, many applications using libxslt will expect these two files to be present. So as it says, it's recommended at runtime. So we do need to install them really. And this is probably a good idea to install as well to make sure that uh, the installation is complete. So let's get all these little fellas up and see what sort of dependencies these bring in. All right, so text live has got lots of dependencies. Um, not sure how this would use it, maybe to build documentation actually. Although there's no mention of it there. So I'm not sure about that. We need that for this package and PTH. Let's have a look at that. Um, I probably will install text live, but not, not this early on. So libgpg error is something we can do because that's got no dependencies. And PTH has got a couple of dependencies. Let's get libgpg out of the way. libgpg error. I'd just like to check the md5 sum of the file just downloaded because we've got it from FTP. It's not secure link, so just to be sure. I mean, there shouldn't be any problems with that. I can't think of any reason why, but just in case. So let's add this to the spreadsheet. So I'm scrolling back up again. So this is quite straightforward, this installation. And you'll notice I will be running tests on every package that I can do um, because sometimes the test testing can reveal that a dependency is missing. Either it's something that you have missed or something that it says in the book is optional and it might not be optional because of some permutation or configuration that you've decided to install I've found in the past so it can be quite useful to run the test for that reason alone but obviously it will give you confidence that what you've built is good and that the uh, software you have built is um, of a good usable quality Um, okay, so that was make check. So all we've got to do is install it. And that's done. So, okay, so that's in the spreadsheet. Let's now shut that down. Take a look at, so it says it needs GCC to be recompiled with G Fortran. But it is optional. So I'll probably miss that out, but libnsl is a dependency that will be used by other packages. So while I'm here, I'm going to install that. And that's got dependency libturpc. And that's got an optional dependency of mit kerberos. So um, that's something I have installed in the past, but it's not something I, I would use anyway. So I'm not going to install that this time. It's it's probably unnecessary, really. So I'll, I'll start this dependency sequence with this package here. So I'll paste that in the spreadsheet. Fetch the file. Oh, why didn't that work?
thought I'd just copy this link. Maybe I didn't copy link address. Okay, let's extract it. So we need to pass in disable GSS API because we're not installing that. Um, oh, it's already in the instructions anyway, so that's handy. So let's run the configure on that. And run make. And make install. And it's done. Now we can install lib nsl. Okay, there's no particular information apart from the usual disable static for the configure command. So I'll just configure and build and no test suite. So straightforward install. So that's done. Let's put that in the spreadsheet. So although these aren't in order, they're more or less in the order, well, they are in the order that I'm installing them. Um, at least I'll be able to search the spreadsheet for packages if I'm unsure whether they've been installed or not. Looks all okay. So it says about don't add the enable pthread parameter to the config command as, as your trash um, and interface header installed by glibc. Uh, apart from that, there's no other extra configuration options. Okay, good luck with the make it says. That looks okay. And it says to run make test. All tests successfully passed, so that's good. Make install and looks like we'll install some documentation as well. So that's PTH done. So, uh, libgcrypt, So it says, um, with capabilities, this option enables libcap2 support. This breaks crypt setup. So uh, I'm not sure what would use that. So because of that, our crypt setup is used to set up transparent encryption of block devices using the kernel crypto API. So that might be something you want to use. Um, so I won't add that in case. Um, so just take the configure 
command as it is. Uh, let's run these separately just to see what happens. Okay, let's see what it says here. So that looks all okay. So let's just run make to build it. That's done and we can install the documentation. Oh, sorry, build the documentation rather and do some tests. Okay, so that's all past the looks of it. One skip, uh, that's not really a problem. Uh, be one more worried if lots are being skipped and more worried than that if lots are failing, but that's okay. So let's do the install. And that's complete. Just check that was libg crypt. Yeah, that's all done. So where were we? This one here was it right? All right, okay. So that's part of libxslt. Let's tidy this up. And let's have a look at this. Okay, so I think ICU's got quite a few dependencies. Um, let's come to that as we need to. We've got one there to do. And docbook XSL nons needs lib XML2. So let's put that there. Let's have a look at ICU then. Um, okay, there's a big warning there about upgrading ICU 73, um, which I won't be doing because this is just going to be a one-off build. Okay, yeah, uh, so this in turn optionally needs LLVM with CLang. Um, so mm, it's not required at the moment, but it is something that will be required later on. So it's really... A decision to yeah, and this has got lots of dependencies as well, so it's probably not the best idea to install that, especially as it's optional and it's only for compiling it. So we'll skip that for now. And Doxygen I won't be using for documentation, so I think we can just install this as it is. Okay, let's extract it. Okay. 
just in the folder called ICU by the looks of it. Yeah, it says that there. So there's no extra information about how to build this. So I'll just run the configuration. Let's put this in the spreadsheet before I forget. And run make. Okay, that's done. So now let's run some tests. Okay, so we've got one failure there. Uh, and I have seen this before for Hebrew calendar. Um, so I'm not going to worry too much about that. It's something I'm definitely not going to use either. Um, it could be something to do with the locale I've got. Um, but obviously if you need that, that may be something to investigate on the on the internet as to why that's failing but I would guess it's probably something to do with the locale um, I don't know if there's any information here at all about that it's quite so that look there, there's quite a few Oh, right, it does say known issue there against the script Hebrew, so I'd say that is probably something that can be ignored. Test Hebrew calendar in temporal leap year. Um, if it's not exactly the same error, it's certainly related if it's mentioning about the Hebrew calendar. So, yeah, I, I wouldn't worry too much about that myself. So I'm going to install that. And let's ICU done. So I'll shut that one down and we go back to libxml2. Um, yeah, this note here, it says up here about ICU, which are just installed optional, see below. Um, and like I said before, I normally wouldn't install optional, but um, ICU I'm pretty sure is a dependency required by other packages so because of that I've installed it now anyway and then it's just there ready for other packages unless it's got hundreds well not hundreds tens of dependencies uh, which would make it quite onerous to do now um, I, I will would, would install optional packages you might think well I thought you said it didn't say 
I thought you said that it was not going to install optional packages. Well, that's the reason why, because it's optional here, but it's mandatory elsewhere. Or not mandatory, sorry. It might be mandatory. It'd certainly be uh, recommended elsewhere. Um, and this note is if the with CPU switch is used, the BLFS does recommend removing necessary references to the ICU library. So we'll run that when this package has been installed. So let's get, there's two packages here. One's to allow complete testing by the looks of it. So we'll get both of them. Okay, so we'll extract the first one. And we've got a lovely big config command here. Let's see if there's any other options here. Disable statics part of it with history, Python, and then we need to add with ICU for better Unicode support. So it is optional, but it does give us an advantage by including this optional package now. That's done, so let's build it. Okay, if we download the test switch, which we did, let's extract it and run the command to build it. And there won't be any output if, except for any errors because we're redirecting everything to the log file there, check.log. Okay, so it's done. It says we can check the output with that command. 15 errors were expected. So apart from that, everything else is okay. No errors. And if you have got Valgrind installed, then you can do further testing there. Uh, that's probably what it checks for is these memory leaks, I imagine. The test use local host to test passing with external entities of the machine where you run the tests also serves as a website. The test may hang. Okay, well, it didn't hang and it's not a website because it's a brand new installation. So unless you are updating something on an existing BLFS, you shouldn't have to do that. So now let's run make install. And then just reread this note. So if the with ICU switch is used, which it was, the BLFS editors recommend removing unnecessary references to the ICU libraries. This will prevent many packages that use libxml2 from unnecessarily linking to the ICU libraries. This in turn will prevent the need for rebuilding many packages when upgrading ICU to a new major version. So after installing libxml2 as the root user initially to commands. So I'm not going to be reinstalling ICU but it's obviously worth doing anyway so that's libxml2 completed so now we've got Dotbook XSL nons. This has got quite a few dependencies, all used at runtime. So this is something I'm going to be not rebuilding, but ensuring that I've got all these built, um, just to make sure that if a package is using this Dotbook XSL nons, that it's got access to these packages that it requires. So let's add this to the spreadsheet and put a note in it saying that we need to install needs 
runtime dependencies of Apache and Python 2, Ruby 3.2.2. Three dot zero, and that's all there is for the internal BLFS packages. So I'll be making sure that I add all of these in for a complete build. But apart from that, for now I can install it because these are all runtime. Um, well, as is libxml, but it's recommended, so I'll get it done, get it out of the way now, which I have done. And I'll just install this then. Uh, paste. So that's the package. There's a patch. And some optional documentation. So that looks useful. So extract this. First, we apply the patch, then we install the documentation into the source directory and Let's check for any other configuration options. There isn't any, so we can just copy these commands to install it. Install the documentation. And then configure the package. So if you're installing the current version over a previous version, remove. We don't need to. And we need to create or append the XML catalog file using the following commands as a root user. So I'm going to copy this all in. And it says occasionally you may find the need to install other versions of Excel style sheets as some projects reference a specific version. One example is BLFS 6, which required the 1.67.2 version. In these instances, you should install any other required version in its own version directory and create a catalog entries as shown so we're not going to install this because you can see it's it needs a version so you don't even need to do this if you are installing a different version side by side with this current version of 1.79.2 so there's nothing else to configure for that i'll close that one down and tidy it up so dot book xml uh, needs SGML common. Now libarchive, I'm pretty sure, is used by another package. So assuming that hasn't got too many requirements, which it doesn't look like it has, I'm going to install that now. SGML common has got no dependencies, so I'm going to do this one immediately. I may as well copy this. Link here instead. Things got to download this one as well. So extract the package, patch it, and rerun autoconf. No configuration information, so let's run the configure. 
and build a package. That's done. Install the package. And it says there about updating it. There's a hint there as to some commands that need to be run. But apart from that, that's SGML common installed. So libarchive has got these two dependencies. Now are those all by itself and so is Nettle effectively because I'm not installing Valgrin. So let's get these two in. So this is quite straightforward, There's not many options or much information to read about the installation of this one. Okay, let's run make check. Okay, that's all okay, yeah, it says all tests passed. Install it with these commands. And that is complete. So that's Nettle. Oh, I didn't tidy up SGM or common, did I? So I need to move the source back to BLFS. And tidy up this Gmail. Okay. So let's fetch LZO. Extract it. And we can configure it now. And build it. So it says to test the results, this should make a check. All tests should, all checks should pass. Yep, they do. Now we should make a test to run a full suite of tests. Okay, that looks all good. So let's install it. And that's LZO done. So now we can do libarchive. Okay, so we've got some extra options here. We can pass without XML2, um, but because we've got libxml2 installed now, we don't need to do that. And without Nettle, if we haven't got Nettle, but we've also installed that as well, so we, we can ignore those two and just pass this configure command as it is. And finally build the package. Run some checks.
Okay, that's all good. So now we'll install the package and that's lib archive done. So now we've got all the required dependencies for Dockbook XML. In fact, we've gone over and above that because we've installed unzip. As I say, that's useful anyway. Um, and libarchive, which I'm pretty sure is used by something later on, something on maybe like Qt or something. So let's now fetch it. It's a zip file. Uh, we have to be careful of these because sometimes the zip files haven't got a container directory and they'll just end up with all the files in the BLFS directory. So if that's the case, always go to the book and read any notes that might be there. Um, it does say that you need the unzip. Oh, it's obviously for extracting this um, package. That's why it's needed. Uh, and that's why libarchive is an option as well. So yes, it does say you should create a directory and change that directory before unzipping the file to ease the removal of the source files after the package has been installed. So let's do mkdir docbook xml change into that and then do unzip dot dot docbook xml dash so as you can see, if we hadn't done done that, we would have ended up with all these files inside the BLFS directory, which would have been a little bit messy to tidy up. So this is just a case of installing some files. Create or update and populate the etc xml catalog catalog file by running for commands as a root user the above installation creates the files and updates catalogs oh hang on sorry for various blfs packages request dot book xml dtd version 4.5 version 4. Oh, sorry 4.x before 4.5 so the following step must be done for this package to be built successfully. Okay. So it explains why. So we've got to do this. Okay, that did something. Didn't get any errors. That's the main thing. So that's docbook XML installed. <clears throat> so let's tidy that up. And we're at libxslt now. We've got all the dependencies for this installed. So let's fetch that. Force of habit, I keep center clicking just to paste what I previously highlighted, but because I'm copying these links, I've got to paste them in. Okay, so what have we got here? This is just a straightforward installation. I'll run the configure first of all. And build it. Run some checks. All okay. Install it. So that's lib xslt done.
So now we're on to P11 kit. We've got everything installed for this. Copy link. So first we've got a set to do a fix it says there. Prepare the distribution specific anchor hook. Install P11 kit by running the following command. So some information here. So if you've got GTK doc and LibXSLT installed, you can use that command there. Use the switch if you want to use the FreeBR library from NSS for SHA and MD5 hashing. Okay, we could probably add that in because we've got NSS installed. So let's try putting that in. Oh, right, yeah, I think I've been caught out with this before. NS, right, yeah, we haven't got NSS installed. And... All right, I thought the FreeBL was a separate download. It obviously isn't. Right, okay, so what I'm going to do is to abandon this installation and install NSS first as it needs that library to turn that switch on. P11 kit is only a runtime dependency anyway, so this should work. So it's quite a big download. So let's extract it. Patch it and change into a subdirectory. Let's see if there's any options here. All right, let's probably use this, copy this first. Let's build up the old one. This option is passed to make so the builders perform no debugging symbols. Let's set the location the SPR headers. Doesn't I presume that enable W error enables warnings as errors, so it disables it by setting to zero. I presume this is for configuring for x8664 bit. This test if SQLite is installed, and if so, it echoes the option. Oh, I see, so it automatically detects if SQLite is enabled or, or installed rather. And NSS disabled guests, uh, G test, sorry. If you don't need to run the NSS test suite, append this option to the make command to prevent the compilation of tests and save some build time. So I'm assuming we can run some tests. Okay, so it looks like it does say it takes some time, but um, it's only 1.2, oh, 15 SPU, so, and 30 on the Intel, so it could take quite a while, but it's worth testing. Um, I will 
because we won't know if it, it's going to work or not really. So that's something to do after P11 kit is installed by the looks of it. Um, so I think that is all that's required to get the build working. So that's built. I'm going to run the tests now. So change into the directory. Let's see if we can time these. And wait for it to finish.
Okay, so that's finished testing. We've got some errors, but it does say um, in the uh, book that some tests may fail on Intel machines for unknown reasons. Um, we could try and examine the results with links. Things results are in HTML. Okay, I think I've had this problem before. Uh, test results security request one. Okay, I don't know why that didn't work. Not sure what it that didn't work but anyway. Uh, so I'm not sure what we look for here. Let's look for fail. So that's expected failure. Past. So, yeah, there's quite a few tests and I'm not sure what to look for. Let's actually look for failed, word failed. No. But there was, what was it, 12, 20 odd, something like that. Uh, 24, so I'm not going to worry too much about that. That's quite a minimal number given there were nearly 70,000 tests that were executed. Uh, that's an extremely small fraction and the fact that um, it does say that some tests may fail on Intel machines that's perfectly right as far as I'm concerned so let's install the package okay why is that not working now Is this expecting that we haven't changed? Oh, I haven't done the CD dot dot, that's why at the end there. And that's probably why the. That uh, could be why that didn't work as well. That URL didn't work. So let's run that. That's all okay. So the thing we've got to do is put this in, but I won't do that in because we haven't installed P11 kit yet. So I'll leave that up to remind me to do that. And we can get rid of NSS. Let me put that in the spreadsheet actually. The record. That's complete, and I'll just highlight that to remind me that's what I need to do. So, uh, tidy up NSS and fetch. Uh, I think we've already got P11 kit. Yep, did. So, extract it. Set in put this hook in whatever it's for and remember to add in this extra option that uses something in NSS. Yep, that's worked now. So now we can run Ninja to build the package.
Let's just enumerate something's failed there. Okay, so it could be that FreeBO library. I've, I'm sure I've tried this before and it's failed. So although we've installed NSS, um, the only thing I think of doing is to do an LD config and rerun that. No, it's failed again. So what I'm going to do is to start again. Um, Because we're in a separate build directory, I don't need to extract the whole lot. I can just start at this point, but I'll leave that option out for that FreeBL library. And we run Ninja. Yeah, it's worked this time. Uh, and let's run some tests. And install the package. And that's done. So it's got here configuring P11 kit. This looks like the same command here. PKCS. 11 p11 kit trust so yes it is so i only need to do this once i can shut down nss and i'll copy that into the spreadsheet and i'll just check that link So that's the file that the link's pointing at, that one there. So the file that we're looking at is libnss ckbi. Dot star. So dot so there it is there. So that is all set up correctly. There's no red indicating a broken link or anything so that's fine so that's p11 kit done